Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Real People. I'm your host, Barbara, and this is Emmett H. Thrower, our resident filmmaker. So Emmett, could you share a little bit about your experience with Mogul Miller? Well, sure, Barbara, thank you. I met him through his publicist when I went to film him at Catano's in New York City. And that was my first meeting of him and Steve Nelson. So every year around him and Steve Nelson's birthday, he would come to New York and I would go and film him wherever he would be playing. So that became a tradition, and that's how we developed our friendship uh, at that time. You know, one of my favorite moments at Lincoln Center was meeting Mogul first. What did you think of Take Six? I love Take Six. I was so excited seeing them in person because I always see them on television. And I talked with them and took pictures and autographs. I was really excited. That was a very memorable moment. And so, we hope you do enjoy the tribute. And here it is, part two of the Mobile Miller Tribute.
is a melodic language that we use to, to build a solo. life to live, you know, learn to love it, you know, don't do it if you don't love it.
The dazzling technique of the jazz pianist Mulgrew Miller sometimes sounded as if it was about to burst the stays of the tightly harmonized straight swinging bebop style on which his work was founded. Playing this music affords us an experience that I think many other people don't get in other areas of functioning in life. Playing this music uh, sort of compels us to be in the moment. Mulgrew would transform the improvisation on one song into the theme of a new song so elegantly that it would seem they must have been written together. Miller's knowledge and technical skill made him a much more complete contemporary jazz musician. Well, to me, music is about feeling and emotions. And above all, uh, music is about beauty. That's what I'm after at all times, uh, it's beauty. Uh, playing mu music for people is the most sublime experience. So, so music is, 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 is the most subtle form of expression. And um, it's no joke when they say it's the universal language. It speaks to everyone. Well, I, I'm searching for the most beautiful melody that I can find, and the most beautiful harmony, and the most dancing rhythm. You know? So, as I said, you know, it's beauty. We are in the bandstand and that something happens when we know we have uh, performed in a way that we don't usually perform, where we realize we weren't even there. It wasn't really about us. Playing the piano seems to, for me, you know, cover that, that part of expressing myself when words, when I can't find the right words. And I don't know if I ever could find the words to, to express you know, what I'd like to express, all the deep emotions and feelings that are there, to express the life and the truth uh, uh, about life. And as a musician, I would say the most important thing is to learn how to listen. Although many of the musicians I've played with over the years, uh, many of them have left the planet, um, I feel a certain, uh, but I feel like, uh, as the old church songs say, I feel like I have a charge to keep, you know. Um, guys like Woody Shaw 
Art Blakey, Johnny Griffin, and Tony Williams, who died for this music, uh, put an investment in me. They invested their time and their interest and their love in me. And that's why um, being a jazz messenger has this, that that title has a special significance to me at this time. I feel like that I'm not even sure that I even deserve to be there when I look at the kind of giants they were. Keys to the City, 1985, was his debut album as a leader. He performed and recorded extensively in the late 1980s and throughout the 90s, with the innovative drummer and composer Tony Williams, the guitarist John Schofield and the saxophonists Joe Lovano and Kenny Garrett. experience that we've experienced a few or many times somewhere along the way if we can get in that zone so to speak and it's a rare experience experience so we, we're slaves to that experience you know and, and the search for it and we're not always there most of us that when it happens we're driven to try to find that experience again and that's such a profound experience. How are you feeling? What do you have to say on your birthday for this playing with Steve again, as you so often do? Yeah, well, it's just nice to be with him. And uh, it's nice to be around. So this, this set here, this is two days that you're celebrating your birthdays together? That's correct. And you always talk about uh, listening, and the audience was really listening. Yes, they and were. So how important is listening, not only for the audience, but for the musician? Oh, especially for the musician. You can really see the connection between you and Steve, uh -huh. you know, and how all the musicians are listening to each other and playing off each other. Is that the key thing to what makes you guys sound so good? Well, that's part of it. Thank you so much, Mr. Miller, and happy birthday. Thank you. Basically, the process is a melodic process of uh, improvising. Well, it's, it's, a lot, it's, a lot, it's a lot like learning to speak uh, verbally. And you started to say, First of all, you know, the, the most simple phrases. And then as time went on, you started to learn to have conversations, you know. You have to learn the language. So, Steve, how does it feel to be celebrating another year with your good friend? Oh, man, I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't know what I'd do without it. Now, you might have a person who's never gone to school and still may speak very well and he may have learned to speak merely by imitating someone who spoke of someone's who spoke uh, good grammar around him and he may be very articulate um, we have that in jazz and uh, and players like uh, Earl Garner who never learned to read music right but he was a profound improviser
because improvising is, is um, a spontaneous process and it happens in the moment, you know. You might hear some of the same language uh, and you might even hear some of the same exact phrases, but they won't be in the same place. The solo would develop differently. Oh, it's, it's definitely a learning process. You see, if, if someone wants to play this music, it's it's a it's, it's a thing that you dedicate much of your life to. Um, a teacher can't really teach you everything about it. Uh, he can only basically the best that, that he can do is, is to d direct you and to point out things. But uh, you would have to listen. See, the, the, the big part of the thing is listening. You can't learn this music in a classroom. Mr. Miller developed his voice in the 1970s, combining the bright position of bebop as exemplified by Bud Powell and Oscar Peterson, with the clattering intrigue of modal jazz, especially as defined by McCoy Tyner. His balanced but assertive style was a model of fluency, lucidity, and bounce, and it influenced more than a generation of younger pianists. He was a widely respected band leader, working with a trio or a, with a group he called Wingspan, after the title of his second album. The blend of alto, saxophone, and vibraphone on that 1987 album appealed enough to Mr. Miller that he revived it in 2002 on the sequel. Working in both cases with the vibraphonist Steve Nelson, among Mr. Miller's releases in the past decade were an impeccable solo piano album and four live albums featuring his dynamic trio. You know, it's a listening experience. Look, this can't be just a classroom experience. You know, it has to be about what you do when you leave the classroom. Do you have any final words as just to say to your fans or up and coming musicians? Well, uh, I wish the best to my fans, the best in health, and the best in music, and the best in life. I don't know what I'd do without it. How much do you hear? Because if you're gonna really, really learn to play this music, you gotta listen to the right guys. And you gotta listen to the important people who have played this music. Thank you, Emmett. You're welcome, Barbara. And thank you. I'm so happy to be back after missing the last episode. I hope you enjoyed our tribute to Moglu Miller. And see you in the next episode of Real People, Love, Peace, and Happiness. <laughs>